we had uh, 900 rand saved at that stage, and I found, and I'd realised it was very important to find premises where people could find us, because people would come to me at at, uh, at this radio and say, "Have you heard of Jimmy the Fridge?" And I'd say, "No, why?" They'd say, "Well, there's a fly in our car that said we do fridge repairs cheaply." And I contacted him. He came out. We gave him 100 rand. He took the fridge away to repair it. And every time we phone him to find him when he brings it back, he never brings it back. So I realised it's very important to start my business. They had some credibility. So I had to find premises where um, people could find us. I found a premises in um, 169 Shlomo Rocks Drive. Uh, I wanted to sign on the building that said who we were. I wanted my own invoice books and the correct phone number so people could phone me. The invoice books and the sign on the roof, 300 rand. Uh, my electricity deposit, 300 rand. My rental, 300 rand. I was flat broke the way we day I started. Four people from Atlas Radio walked up the road. The day I opened, they said they want to work for me. I had to pay them on the Friday. And that probably was one of the biggest commitments I ever made because I had to give incredibly good service to look after those people, or look after my customers so I can look after the people that work with me. Fortunately, I'd, I'd known about it. I started my own business and I told people and the phone rang, I'd do the repairs promptly, efficiently, as well as I could, get them back to the customer so we had happy customers. At this stage, I had a wife and two children at home, and at quarter past five, most often it's the phone going, and she'd say, you've got a wife and two children at home when you're coming home. <laughs> and I'd say, I've got four washing machines to fix. So what I was, we'd do, I'd go home, fetch Margaret, kids in the prams and the cots, come back to work, and we'd work, Margaret do my books, do my banking, check my repairs, etc., like that. And so we slowly built a business. And if a product wasn't worth repairing at that stage, I would go to Game or one of the discount stores and I'd buy it for the customer. I was in the house, I saw what type of house it was, if it was a house like this, I suggest Midday or AEG or, or Siemens, but it was a house uh, in Glen Allen where we lived at that stage, I'd suggest perhaps I look at a fire or something like that. And I could judge what they do, and I'd go and buy it from game, go to the house, take the shoe braces, show them how to use it, call the maid, show how to use the machine, get whatever I paid for at game, the same amount, and I put it in my pocket. It took two years before suppliers gave me accounts, and once they opened accounts for me, I could buy it, sell it, and pay for it in 30 days. And that's when the business started to build quite nicely, because I could buy a bit of stock, and, uh, but I'd only buy when I needed it. An uh, old uh, salesman named Pat Munford, who lived in Durban North, used to come past quite regularly and stop on his way home and say, how's business, you know, and have a cup of tea together. And he said to me, no, Alan, one day, you should be able to sell microbes. I said, oh, they cook quickly, don't they? And he said, yes, they do. So I was watching all the cars going up and down Shlomo Rocks Drive. And I said, everybody wants to go fast today. So I said, what are your two best microwaves? And he told me his two best microwaves. I ordered them, went to the old washing machine over there and the old chest freeze over here. 30 days later, they're still there. 60 days later, they're still there. I actually hated them because I paid for them and they're still there. I phoned Margaret on the Saturday and I said, I've got to bring these microwaves home. I don't know how to use them. I can't sell them. And they're just sitting here and they cost me money. So I took a microwave home to Margaret and uh, she cooked a chicken in 20 minutes. Wow! Cooked a cake in four minutes. Couldn't believe it. Called our neighbor and said, come and check this out. She says, you've got to tell people about this. So our old shop uh, showroom was not even as far as that wall, but about this wide. We took everything out one night. We invited couples and we realized it was very important to invite couples in because if we just invited wives to come and see a microwave cooking demonstration, they'd go back and tell their husbands we saw this cooking demonstration, it's nice, and you say, well, that's interesting. But if we bought, invited couples and gave them supper, they might think differently. So we hired a lot of chairs. Margaret and a friend of ours, Dar Lindsay, did a microwave demonstration. They did a starter, they cooked a milk of lamb, they cooked a roast chicken, and a pile upside down, and they cooked a cake in a shoebox. Wow. And we invited the people to come and eat the food. And one gentleman said to his wife, would you like one? And I can never remember exactly how many we did, but it was either 9 or 11 microwaves we sold that night. I thought, wow, we made it, jeez, this is it. You know? And I was still doing repairs at that stage, and I was going to people's houses, and I'd go to a customer's house and I'd say, how are you getting on the microwave? 
And they say, oh, you're warming up the dog food and making coffee. I said, well, why don't you use it? I said, we don't know how to. So I went back to Margaret again. And I said, we've got to teach people how to use this microwave. At this stage, we, bu we bought our first building, which is 27 inch long, Rocks Drive. It was an old butchery. We knocked out the cold rooms, cleared out the little sh uh, showroom downstairs. And upstairs where the butcher lived, we knocked down the wall between the lounge and the dining room. Um, and we made a cookery school. And every time a person bought a microwave from us, we had them four free lessons. And the business just started to expand. People got to know that here's a couple that the husband will come out and do the pairs, the wife will come out and show you how to, well, she used to go and show people how to use the washing machines at the home, show them how to cook meals in it, and the business really took off. And that's basically how her started. Um, but the things we learned in the very early days, we've got to look after people. We've got to look after our customers. We've got happy customers that come back to us. Happy staff, we look after staff, they look after our customers. And that's how we've grown the business, by looking after people. And today, we go out of our way to draw people. We don't employ uh, anyone in a high position unless it's an accountant or HR or someone like that. But we bring people in from the bottom, stock controllers, laborers, drivers, and we draw them and we give them hope that one day they'll be a manager or a regional manager in one of our stores. And the success we've had is unbelievable. They become Hersheyfied, they become loyal, and they grow with us. And it's so nice to see their uh, the kids go to private schools, and I think that's what it's all about for us. Just um, that little seed my father drew in me um, has grown <coughs> deep into the soil in South Africa. The roots are deep there. The crunk is solid. You put your arm around the crunk, you can feel it's a firm solid. You look at all the branches. People can climb on those branches. They can grow. They can get up. All the leaves around the tree have sheltered people for many years, and the fruit we've grown on that tree has fed many people. Margaret. <laughs>